In this video, we're going to look at another technique for evaluating integrals. And the technique we're going to use requires us to use trig identities, and maybe in combination with some of our other techniques. So here are a list of useful uh, trigonometric identities. Certainly, we want all the Pythagorean identities. In other words, sine squared a plus cosine squared a is 1. And if I go ahead and divide this equation by cosine squared a, I get tan squared a plus 1 equals secant squared a. If I divide my first equation, if I divide every term by uh, sine squared a, I'll get 1 plus cotangent squared a equals cosecant squared a. Now, quite honestly, we don't use the addition formulas very much in our integration, but if you remember the addition formulas, you can get two formulas that are useful. Certainly, the double angle formula is very, very useful and we'll be using that throughout the course and in many other uh, courses as well, not just math courses. Very common identity that gets used. Uh, less common is what I would get if I were to uh, add uh, these two equations together. I would get 2 sine a cosine b is sine of the sum plus sine of the difference. So occasionally this can be useful. Now for the cosine addition and subtraction formulas, again, uh, we may not use them directly, but from them, if I take the sum, I get a nice uh, identity for uh, cosine of a times cosine of b, or sine of a times sine of b. Uh, probably the most useful is the double angle formula, which if we combine this double angle formula, with our original Pythagorean identity, I get two other ones which are extremely useful because I can solve each one of these uh, for the squared term. I can solve the first one for cosine squared a, and I would get uh, cosine squared a is one half cosine of 2a plus 1. If I solve this equation for sine squared a, I would get sine squared a is going to be 1 half 1 minus cosine of 2a. So uh, it would be really, really good if you could learn all of these, if you haven't already learned them. But certainly, you want to know all the Pythagorean ones, all the double angle formulas. That's at a minimum. You need to know those to be able to function uh, in this course and other courses going forward. So there's a general trend here, but we're going to break it down into multiple cases. So the first one we're going to look at are integrals that have odd powers of sine x or cosine x. So if our integral contains uh, an, so let me go ahead and change that to an, odd power of sine x or an odd power of cosine x, then uh, we can use our Pythagorean identity to help evaluate the integral. So for example, if I want to evaluate uh, the integral of cosine cubed of x dx, well, I'm going to take out a factor of cosine x here. And it's going to be multiplied by cosine squared x. And then for my identity, I can say that, oh, cosine squared x is 1 minus sine squared x. Now you can see what's going on here now. Why are we doing it this way? Well, if I make a u substitution where u equals sine x, then du would be cosine x dx. And that's what I have outside there. So I'm getting into a position where I can make a u substitution and uh, be able to find the antiderivative. 
Now you have some choices. Uh, what I'm going to do here is go ahead and uh, break this into two uh, integrals. I'm going to first distribute the cosine x inside the brackets. And in the first integral, I don't need to make any change of variables. In the second integral, I'll go ahead and set u to be sine of x, so du is cosine of x, dx, and then find the antiderivative and change it back to my original variable. So you can see why we want to have an odd power, because the even power then uh, can be changed into the appropriate sine or cosine, and then I have one power left over in order to make my u substitution or change of variables possible. So let's look at the next example. I'd like to evaluate the integral from 0 to pi of sine to the power of 5 dx. So when it's an odd power, I want to break it up into, well, one of them to the power of 1, and then the other one raised to an even power. And so sine to the power of 4x, I can think of that as being sine squared x squared. And then sine squared x, I can use my identity and write sine squared x as 1 minus cosine squared x. And again, I have some choices here. I'm going to go ahead and expand this 1 minus cosine squared of x inside the brackets using FOIL. And I'll get 1 minus 2 cosine squared x plus cosine to the power of 4x. And then outside the brackets, sine x dx. And so now I'm not going to go ahead and distribute the sine x. I'm just going to go ahead and make my u substitution straight away. I'm going to say that u equals cosine of x. du then would be minus sine of x dx. I can change my bounds as well. When x equals 0, uh, u is going to equal 1. And when x equals pi, u is going to be negative 1. And so uh, since sine of x dx is going to be negative du, I'll have a minus sign out in front. And uh, my bounds are now from 1 to negative 1. I have 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the power of 4. Now, I don't like to have the negative out here, and I don't like to have my upper bound smaller than the lower bound. So I can solve both those issues by just uh, exchanging the upper and lower bound. That changes the negative to a positive. And now I'll go ahead and use the power rule, find the antiderivative, and perform the evaluation. And collect it as one fraction. We get 16 over 15. So we know that with odd powers, we have a, a strategy. What about even powers? Well, this is where we're going to be solving those double angle formulas for cosine for either cosine squared or sine squared x. So if we have even powers, I can apply those identities. I may have to apply them more than once, but uh, I can use those identities and I'll be able to get to the answer eventually. So here's uh, an example, it's a definite integral from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 of cosine squared x dx. So I'll go ahead and use my identity. And we're just using identities here, so there's no change of variables. And uh, now I can go ahead and find the antiderivative. Um, at this stage, I hope we don't need to explicitly make a change of variables to find the antiderivative of cosine of 2x. Um, I hope that you have had enough practice to know that that's going to be 1 half sine of 2x, uh, the 1 half coming from the reciprocal of the 2 inside the parentheses there. And so then I'll do the uh, perform the evaluation. And um, 
let's see where I put in pi over two and then minus pi over two. Yeah, that's going to give me uh, my pi. And then, oh, when I multiply pi over two or negative pi over by two, by two, I just get sine of pi or sine of negative pi. So the second term makes no contribution in the evaluation. So we just get pi over two as our solution. Here we have another even power of sine of x. We'd like to know the indefinite integral of that sine to the power of four of x. So I'm going to look at sine to the fourth power as sine squared squared. I'll use my identity for sine squared of x. So that will give me inside the brackets 1 half parentheses 1 minus cosine of 2x all squared. So squaring the 1 half gives me the 1 fourth. If I multiply this out using FOIL, I'll get 1 minus 2 cosine of 2x plus cosine squared of 2x. Now, I have no problem finding the antiderivative of 1 or the antiderivative of negative 2 cosine 2x. But cosine squared of 2x is something that I don't know the antiderivative of, but I can find it out by using our identity. Remember, cosine squared u is half of 1 plus cosine of 2u. So now I just think of u as being 2x here. So cosine squared of 2x would just be 1 half of 1 plus cosine of 4x. So I'm using my identities twice here. I'm going to go ahead and multiply out, after I put in that identity, I'm going to multiply out by the 1 fourth, by the 1 half, uh, so that I have individual terms with the correct coefficient. I'll go ahead and collect some like terms. I see I have a constant 1 fourth plus 1 eighth. Let me combine those together into 3 eighths. And now I'll take the antiderivative. Antiderivative of 3 eighths will just give me 3 eighths x. Antiderivative of cosine of 2x would be half sine of 2x, but I need to multiply times half. So that's how I get the 1 fourth. Antiderivative of cosine of 4x would be 1 fourth sine of 4x. So 1 fourth times 1 eighth gives me 1 over 32. And of course, my constant of integration. So here I have odd powers and even powers. It might not be clear uh, which way I should go, but really it's generally if you have an odd power, that is the technique you want to go to. So I'm going to think of the cosine cubed x as being cosine squared times cosine of x. And so I want to write everything else in terms of sine of x. So my first factor here is already sine squared x, so I will not change that at all. I'm just going to change this cosine squared x to be 1 minus sine squared x in parentheses. And so now I can go ahead and um, multiply that out and uh, make my u substitution. u is going to be sine x, du is cosine x dx. So that odd power there really tells me what my du should be. And if I know my du, then I should know what my u is, meaning that everything else should be in terms of sine. Uh, here, I'm going to go ahead and, since I'm making this change of variables, I'll go ahead and change the bounds as well. When x equals 0, u will be 0. When x is pi over 2, u is going to be 1. And let's go ahead and find the antiderivative and perform the evaluation to get 2 over 15. All right, so we looked at sines and cosines. What about tangent and secant? We had that other 
Pythagorean identity involving tangent and secant. And we're only going to talk about tangent and secant, but everything we say about tangent and secant will apply to cotangent and cosecant as well. So first, let's talk about the case where we have even powers. And the thing that we want to be thinking about here is the fact that the derivative of tangent of x is secant squared x. And so what I want to do is isolate a secant squared dx and try to write everything else in terms of tangent. And then I'll be able to make a change of variables where u equals tangent of x and evaluate the integral. So I already have tangent to the power of 6x, so I'll use my identity for this first secant squared x. At the last secant squared x, I leave it there for my change of variables. And so I could go ahead and multiply out the, or distribute the tangent to the 6 of x inside the parentheses. And again, the reason why we're doing this is because the derivative of tangent of x is secant squared x. And now I'm ready for my u substitution. I can let u equals tangent x, du is secant squared x, dx is what that should say. A little, got a little ahead of myself there. We're not ready for du yet. dx. And now when I make my change of variables, I do have a du this time. It's just u to the sixth plus u to the eighth du. And I can go ahead and take the antiderivative and evaluate that. So I'll make my correction here quickly. Oh, there's no evaluation necessary. Just add the plus c. Great. Oh but I do want to go back to my original variable. So I'm going to go change the u back to tangent of x. So that was our strategy. If I have even powers of tangent and secant, what if I have an odd power? Well, now my strategy is going to be different. I'm going to go ahead and factor out a secant x tangent of x. After I do that, I want to change everything to terms of secant of x because the derivative of secant of x is secant x tangent x. And so that will give me a change of variables that can be used to evaluate the integral. So let's look at an example here. This example happens to have a Greek letter phi as our variable. Sometimes you just have to use a different letter. So we're going to find the integral of tangent to the fifth phi secant cubed phi d phi. So let's go ahead and take out a tan phi secant phi. I'll be left with tangent to the fourth phi secant squared phi. So now the idea is that I want everything that's left over written in terms of secant of phi. So it doesn't really matter if this isn't for secant what its power is. It could be an even power or an odd power. But what is important is that the power on tangent has to be an even power so I can apply my identity. So all right, uh, think of tangent to the fourth phi is tangent squared squared. Tangent squared is just going to be secant squared phi minus one. So that'll be all squared. That'll be times secant squared phi. And then separately, I'll have that secant phi tangent phi d phi, which I need for my change of variables. So I went ahead and I multiplied this out. And now I'm ready for my u substitution. Let me just make sure 
I seem to have forgotten a close bracket here. Let's make sure I did that right. So secant to the six phi minus two secant to the power of four phi plus secant squared phi. And that'll be times secant phi tangent phi d phi. So I'm ready for my u substitution. u is going to be uh, secant of phi. So du is secant phi tangent phi d phi. That's what I had prepared all along here. And making the substitution then, I'll have the integral of u to the power of 6 minus 2u to the power of 4 plus u squared. And I can just use the power rule. But I'm not done yet because I have to go back to my original variable. So replace my u with the secant of phi. And I'll have 1 7th secant to the power of 7 of phi minus 2 fifths secant to the power of 5 phi, and then plus 1 third secant cubed phi, plus my constant of integration. So I think this is our last example, but we're going to look at it in a couple of different ways. So we have... Uh, you know, just sine of 3x times sine of 6x. So one of the issues is that I don't have the same input to the sine. So that really eliminates the strategies we've discussed so far. But if I make a u substitution here, if I let u equals 3x, so 2u is 6x, and du is 3dx, I can write the integral in terms of u and see that now I have sine of u times sine of 2u. And I said that that double angle formula for sine is super important. And here we need it right away. Uh, the 1 third just came from du equaling 3dx. So we'll go ahead and use that double angle formula here. Replace sine of 2u with 2 sine of u cosine u. I'll multiply out the two sines to get sine squared u. Two thirds uh, is my constant out in front now. And now I'm ready to uh, just make a, a change of variables. I'll use y for my new variable. y will be sine u. dy is cosine of u. Uh, d u is what it should say there. And so what I'll have in my in terms of y is just the integral 2 thirds uh, integral y squared dy. So easy to find the antiderivative. And let's rewrite it in terms of, first in terms of u. And then I'm going to have to go back to my original variable, which was x. So I'll replace u with uh, 3x in the antiderivative. Now, there's another way I could look at this. Uh, if you recall that uh, from our addition formulas and subtraction formulas for sine, we had an identity for twice sine A sine B is going to be cosine of the difference minus cosine of the sum. So it doesn't really matter which one I call a and b. Uh, I will get the same result, but it's just nicer to deal with positive expressions. And so I'm going to choose a to be the larger one and b to be the smaller one. So when I subtract, I get a positive value. So let's go ahead and use this identity with these expressions for a and b. So cosine of a minus b just be cosine of 3x. Subtract off cosine of a plus b, which is cosine of 9x. And from here, uh, there's no real further work needed. I can find the antiderivative directly. And um, 
I could go ahead and clean this up a little bit by multiplying through by one half. And if we compare this to what we had before, uh, it looks like something very different. But yeah, you know, with these trig functions, there's so many identities you can use. And uh, I did take the time to go through this, but I'm not going to show you in the video uh, to verify that uh, uh, these two expressions uh, are actually an identity. So uh, the constant of integration would be the, the same in each case. Sometimes you'll see the case where uh, the two expressions are, are, not are not identities. So they're not equal to each other, but they differ by a constant, which is fine for our uh, indefinite integrals.